So let's do an example of a one sample T. And you're going to see that all the six steps stay exactly the same, except uh, we set these values equal to T and we use the T distribution. Otherwise, everything is going to look very similar. So here's the story. You're a farmer and you know a fat chicken sells for more than a thin chicken. You know that a chicken on average or on standard feed weighs an average of three pounds. All the literature on feed suggests that organic feed increases the weight of animals. You feed a sample of 25 chickens to organic feed for several weeks. The average weight of a chicken on the new feed is 3.49 pounds with a standard deviation of 0.9 pounds. Should we switch to organic feed? So before we move on, I want to see if you can think of anything in that prompt that may be important to you. And hopefully you uh, kind of alerted yourself to all the literature on feed suggests. So that should be telling us we might be doing a one-tailed test. So if you'd like to try and create your first step of the research question, you could pause here for a moment and think about what it would be, maybe make a note, and then moving forward, we'll see if you're right. The only other thing I wanna point out before we move on to the first step is, notice that I have all the same kinds of data. I have a, a known average, I have a sample size, I have a um, sample average, and then I have a standard deviation. That's all the same things we need to be for. But I want to point out that this 0.90 is the standard deviation of the sample. It is no longer the standard deviation of some kind of known information. So while it's the same information, it's in a different place. This is, symbol is S, whereas if I had said, oh, on average, three pounds with a standard deviation of 0.9 pounds, that would have said that we knew sigma. If you know sigma, go ahead and use the Z. But most of us don't end up knowing sigma, so we end up having to use the T. All right, so remember our six steps are going to stay exactly the same. The only thing that's going to really differ is our rejection region is going to be using the T distribution and our test statistic is going to look subtly different because we're going to use the S instead of sigma, but otherwise it's going to pretty much look the same. So hopefully you wrote down your research question. Maybe you came up with something like this. Does organic feed increase the weight of chickens? Now, if yours is worded slightly differently, that's okay, as long as it's conveying the same sentiment, which is that there's going to be an increase in weight or they're fatter or something like that. So now that we have that, let's think about what the null and the alternative would be. So which one of these would be the null? The chickens fed organic feed are skinnier than those fed a normal diet. Chickens fed organic feed are the same as those fed a normal diet. Chickens fed organic feed are skinnier or the same as those fed a normal diet. And this is when Professor Dam shouts, no difference. <laughs> so we're testing ourselves now. Now, hopefully you remember that when I do say the null hypothesis, I do say no difference. So D is right, but that isn't what I was just trying to be funny. So go ahead and mark your answer and let's see if you're right. Oops, I thought I circled it. So in this case, the right answer is um, chickens fed organic feed are skinnier or the same as those fed a normal diet. Now that might feel weird to you, why it's worded so funny. Maybe you had said chickens fed organic feed are not, what was the word I used, heavier? Oh, increase the weight. Chickens fed organic feed uh, does not increase the weight of chickens. What I'd like to point out is not increasing the weight of chickens is also the same as saying they're skinnier or the same. So I want you to, to realize that my wording may be different than your wording, but we have to find the one that most closely aligns. So in this case, C is the right answer. All right, if we were going to be talking about null hypotheses, let's just take a, a step back and see which one of these is not possible. It's just kind of just checking ourselves. So are we allowed to say for a null hypothesis that chickens on organic feed are not different than regular chickens? Are we allowed to say that sample of chickens on organic feed are not different than regular chickens? We would write it as mu organic equals mu. Or do you think all of these are fine? So you can pause the video if you'd like to mull it over. But I'm gonna tell you now, the, there is one in here that is not possible and that would be B. B is not possible because we use the word the sample of chickens. We're not interested in this sample, we're interested in inferential statistics to speak out about how um, all of these things are related to the larger population. So we don't wanna use the word sample when we're writing our null and alternative hypotheses. All right, so now that we've established that, which one of these would be a good alternative hypothesis? Chickens fed organic feed are fatter. Chickens fed organic feed are the same. Chickens fed organic feed are fatter or the same. And then D's just a joke, I'm a vegetarian. 
Okay, you can pause it if you'd like to mull it over. And now here's our answer. The answer that would work here, the only answer that would work as an alternative hypothesis would be A, chickens fed organic feed are fatter. B could never work as an alternative because it has the word same. That can't be in the alternative hypothesis. Similarly, C has same, so that can't work as an alternative. So the only uh, answer here that works as an alternative hypothesis is A. Okay, so we've done steps one and two. Now let's start to do step three. But first we have to establish whether this is one-tailed or two-tailed. So given the way we worded our step one and two, what do you think? One-tailed, two-tailed, maybe you can't remember and you're just gonna admit that. And then again, I have to have a joke in there. Yes, chickens have tails, same as two tails and one tail. All right, you can pause if you want, but the answer is one-tailed. That's because we have a lot of previous literature that says feeding pe uh, feed people, animals, organic feed increases their weight, and now we're just seeing if it's true for chickens. So this one is a one-tailed test. So that's gonna help us move forward with knowing how to look at the table. So again, we're gonna look at the one-tailed side. And um, if you recall, I think we had 25 uh, chickens. So if we have 25 chickens, our degrees of freedom will be 25 minus one, so that's 24. We're going to use this column because in this class, we're just gonna always assume alpha to be 0.05 or 5%. So this means that our degrees of freedom are 24, so our critical value is 1.711. So um, that's written here. Now that isn't our rejection region. Our rejection region isn't 1.711, because that's just a score, that's not a region. But that's the score that defines the region. So we would need it to be 1.711 or higher to be in the rejection region. So you could write it this way, or you could say more than 1.711, or you could draw it, put in the 1.711 in the picture, and then write RR. All right, so now we have to do step four, where is, that's our math. So we're gonna compute our test statistic. In this case, we're gonna be setting it equal to T and no longer Z. I like to solve from the bottom up, so I'm gonna solve this denominator piece first, which by the way, is still called the standard error or the standard error of the mean. So from our prompt, we knew that it was 0.9 and we had 25 chickens. So we say the standard deviation divided by the square root of 25, and that means the standard error of the mean is 0.18. So if we put that back into this formula, we have the numerator divided by 0.18, we're going to get a t-score of 2.72. So we wanna see, this is the answer to step four, and now we're gonna to wanna to see where that falls in our rejection region. Remember our rejection region was 1.711 or higher. So if it's 1.711 or higher, and we find our number to be 2.72, what do we do? Do we reject the null, fail to reject the null, accept the null, or accept the alternative? And yes, those are chickens playing soccer. All right, you can pause if you'd like to mull it over. Okay, so hopefully you notice that C and D are never right. I will never allow you to say accept the null or accept the alternative. So cross those off right away. The only two answers that would ever work for step four is to reject the null or fail to reject the null. In this case, 2.72 is higher than the 1.711 cutoff. So we're going to reject the null. So A is the right answer here. So what ends up happening is we're going to reject the null. This poor little null there, she's so sad. And now we have to decide what conclusion we're going to make if we're going to call up grandma and tell her what we found. So I, I wanted to put this, point this out that we calculated a t-score. Sometimes we'll call it t-obtained or t-calculated. We got 2.72 differentiating from the t-critical. This is the one we looked up in the table. So this is always called the t-critical because our calculated or obtained t-value is larger than our t-critical, we rejected the null. So now here's grandma waiting for our phone call. What do we tell her? Feeding chickens organic feed is not associated with a weight increase. Feeding chickens organic feed is associated with a weight increase. Feeding chickens organic feed is associated with a weight change. Uh, by the way, Grandma, I rejected the null, or maybe you want to say, how's Grandpa doing? So if you would like to mull this over and pause it for a second, you can do that. 
Okay, and hopefully you realize the answer is ch feeding chickens organic feed is associated with a weight increase. We rejected the null, so we should be making a conclusion about a change in weight, and we have to be specific about that change. And in this case, it was a weight increase. So now grandma knows what to do with her um, chickens if she has them. All right, tune into the next video when we talk about how to report this information.